Hello, this is Christoph from DataBridge again with a Tuesday Tips video on ClickSense tables this time. And uh, I found out again something really cool I have to share you about the properties and what you can do with CSS. You know where I get my inspirations from? I tell you a secret. I wear click socks. The first thing I would like to show you is the effective use of this developer tools and the properties. Actually, how do you get this developer into your context menu when you right click? You have to add somewhere in your URL slash option slash developer. And when the page reloads, you get this additional menu item in the context menus. And the exercise I would like to achieve here is to get all those columns equally aligned. So what I mean is uh, it's annoying that all of them have a kind of slightly different width and I want to have them exactly like this one. Um, so before we start, uh, we have to actually understand what's the difference between layout and properties. So if you open the developer, you see properties and you see layout. So the difference is very simple. Properties is what the default for the object says and layout is what your current instance. Um, and even if you're a self-service user, you, you probably have noticed you can change the column with the sort order. You can rearrange the order of the columns, but this is not persisted. And exactly this is the difference. So now it asks me if I want to apply this temporarily made changes, they're only in the layout state. And if I apply now, they go into the properties. Um, so now we are set for this exercise and we go to developer and open the properties because this is what I want to work on. I want to persist my changes for all the coming users. And this is a very long object. You can see I've created quite a lot of columns. And when you scroll down to the bottom or near the bottom, there is somewhere column widths. Wait a minute. Uh, there we go. And now um, if I start adjusting this to 80, just edit a few of them. Instantaneously, as soon as I move the cursor out of the window, the properties get applied. So watch the table in the back. We have already achieved that the first five columns are exactly 80 pixels. But there's even more than this. You can... Um, because that is a little bit painful editing in this small window. Of course, you can grab the code and use a real good editor instead, for example, Visual Studio Code. And what this also allows you is to do some mass replacings. For example, I've used a formula here and I've introduced a new one or you, you had to rename fields You probably know the exercise. Now I should would have the pain to go into 16 different columns here and change all the formulas. But uh, uh, with this, I can do all the replacings in one go. So now I have a new formula in all of them. I copy back the whole script, paste it into this window again, close it and I have fixed all my formulas at once. So they all now read uh, this W where it was uh, in all the instances and different formula just before. It was really powerful uh, to see that properties actually works in two directions. You can also edit here. Just be sure you don't mess up the JSON structure while you make edits. So the second trick for today I would like to show you is beautifying pivot tables. And here is a typical click pivot table, which yep, has some things I don't like so much. For example, this clunky list boxes, which take away quite some white space in every pivot. And um, there's a very simple fix for this. If you go to the custom objects, click visualization bundle and take the multi KPI object. And let's hope click will not remove this functionality after this video becomes viral because this has 
CSS as an editable window here. So it's the easiest way to put in new CSS. Of course, you could go and edit the theme, but that's much more effort. But if you just want a quick fix on that very page, here you go. So first thing you want to do here is add some uh, measures, otherwise it won't render. So typically what I put in is equal CSS, but you can put in anything else, doesn't really matter. Um, then under appearance, under general, disable the hover menu. This is available as of September 2020 version. Um, and now let's, uh, let's have a look at the different styles that help you manipulate and beautify the pivot. In order for helping you with this, I have this little app here, which I share in my Git repository. Download it and you can just uh, pick the cell you want to take. For example, no drop down list boxes, copy this cell value, go back, find the style window, which by the way, you can make bigger if you want. And you paste it and that's it. Instantaneously, this things here, the list boxes are gone. Now there are more things I don't, I don't like. For example, the null value cells are highlighted and have this left aligned uh, dash. I don't like this to get rid of this. Uh, there's another fix as you can imagine. You say, okay, I want null values to be invisible, the no drop down list boxes in the pivot and bold cells as normal. So if you take this free, uh, here's the combined CSS that you can copy the cell value, go back and paste it. A few things happen now. There is no more bold. You can also see that the, uh, that the cell which were now no longer show. And wait a minute, there is a hidden row. So this happens. Let me just compare it to how it was before. If you have unsymmetric depth in your uh, in your hierarchy. So some, for example, sometimes there is no level three, it ends on level two. Remember, these were three different uh, columns. I don't want the whole row to show. And luckily, if you put the font size to zero pixels here, what happens is that this whole row just goes away as you probably originally wanted. Now, the last thing I want to do is get rid of this the object itself. You can put it into one corner, it doesn't really matter, but it's still visible. And um, there's one more CSS trick I can share with you. So now let's get all of them. Uh, I copy this and it hides now the multi KPI object. Luckily, it has a distinctive class that I can set the display to none for those who know what CSS is. And I paste it here. And now this is also invisible. This trick also works on Click Cloud because it's a standard uh, object of the visualization bundle. It should be up here, uh, but you have to remember this because now it's totally invisible, even in edit mode. So if you see a pivot that looks much better than usual, you have to suspect somewhere must be this little tricky thing. And you can typically see the extension object here in the My Sheets overview. With that, I say goodbye for this time and stay tuned. The Ministry of Silly Charts 2020 is soon to be out. See you the next time. Bye bye.